guys, this is Tracer83 and welcome to another video on long range rifle shooting and external ballistics. First off, I'd just like to apologize for the lousy sound quality and lighting. I've got kind of a cruddy microphone that I'm using today. And also we're having one of these bizarre, rare El Paso storms outside. Anyway, the subject of this video is going to be long range ballistic charts. Charts, drop tables, uh, rifle dope sheets, whatever you want to call them. We're going to talk about them. And in particular, we're going to focus on the 308, the 300 Win Mag, and the 338 Lapua. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to talk about the charts that I use and specifically how I create them and what my source material is. Before we go into that, I want to show you something. This right here is called a TFT. That stands for Tabular Firing Table. It's what the field artillery uses to get its detailed ballistic firing solutions when it is not using its digital systems. And the way this is broken down is it's divided into sections by charge weight and projectile combination. So really you go in, you find that combination and it's gonna give you all of your drop data for that round and powder. And then through a series of other tables, it's also gonna give you all the other corrections you need to make for non-standard conditions. Now, the reason I bring this up is the charts that we're gonna be talking about today came from a collaboration between Taborosaurus Rex of Rex Reviews and a guy named Mecha Streisan. These, uh, these charts basically simulate what is in a TFT or a tabular firing table in that instead of just having a ballistics card for a set of conditions, so you go on JBM Ballistics, you fill out your data, and then it prints it out for what your conditions are gonna be on that day. Well, this set of charts gives you a wide range of conditions to account for and also supplementary data that'll help you factor in things like Coriolis and changes in temperature, changes in barometric pressure, and so on. The ones that I was originally using that I had to recently replace were similar, except we had to go in and basically fill them out manually. We'd have to go into JBM Ballistics, find our temperature, say we were shooting at 70 degrees at 26.01 inches of mercury, put in all of our conditions, get our data, and then fill it out in the spreadsheet, and then change our conditions to, say, 80 degrees, do it all again and just go on and on and on keep filling it out. Well, what Mecha Streisand did is integrate a ballistic solver with this spreadsheet. So all you have to do is fill out the data as you would in JBM Ballistics or any other uh, ballistics program and it'll produce these charts for you in great, in great detail and also give you the supplementary data that I was talking about. Now my title says, what does it say? 308 versus 300 Win Mag versus 338 Lapua ballistics data and whatnot. Well, what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take the charts that we just put together out to the range and we're going to just kind of do some comparisons. We're going to compare what our ballistics data that we're getting on our iPhones, what it says. We're going to compare what our charts are saying in relation to what we observe. So in other words, we'll take a shot at a thousand yards and see if that matches up with what our data tells it tells us that it should be. We'll also do a little bit of comparing between the different rifles as far as uh, the amount of spin and Coriolis on each of these, what the muzzle velocity variations like, all kinds of stuff. And really the point of this is to just kind of take Mecha Streisand's charts out to the range and apply them because I don't really know if that's been done on film yet and I know Rex has talked extensively about them and he plans to do a video here before too long where he sort of walks you through the process but we're just going to go out to the range and let you see how we go about getting our non-standard conditions and applying what's in the ballistics tables and seeing how it works out. All right guys this whole time I've been talking about how we're going to go out and do this and we're going to check our drop data and whatnot. Well, that's not me talking to the YouTube audience like, hey, join me as we, as we do this. I have my pal UCS Spirit in the house right behind the camera, and I think it's time he joined us. Ah, oh, hello everybody. What is that? That is my pew stick in Accuracy International. In Accuracy, and how, did, how much did this pew stick run you? 
entirely too much. In the aviation industry, this would be roughly 11 aviation maintenance units. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like a Star Wars geek or something. <laughs> Empire credits. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, true or false? Also, you traded a 408 shy tag towards an airplane. Hey, my financial decisions, be it left to their own devices, do weird things. But yes, I did trade a EDM Arms Windrunner in 408 shy tag with the 50 cal bolt and barrel spare magazine and a Night Force attacker scope for part of an airplane. Yes, I did do that. Why did you, why, okay, why did you have the 408 in the first place when you had this? Well, I mean, 1,700 meters is nice, but 2,000 to 3,000 meters is even nicer. If that's a word. Is that a word? Nicer, is that, nicer, nice is a word. Yeah, I like nicer. All right, anyway. Or my, muy more better. Muy more better. better. That's yep. a mouthful. That is, and so is a 408. Well, I'll tell you what's I'll tell you what's also <laughs> a mouthful is what this thing is. Tell us what this is. Okay, this is your uh, Accuracy International Arctic Warfare Super Magnum in 338 Lapua, commonly referred to by the military from the military as the L115A3, which currently holds the world record longest sniper kill at 2,000 I think 2,400 meters and change. I think I remember seeing the uh, History Channel video on that or whatever. Now, true or false, this whole setup is one system. So the Arctic Warfare system is the, the chassis, the scope, the action, all of that together. That is a correct statement. So Accuracy International makes them several things. You've got the Arctic Warfare, you've got the Police Marksman, and you've got the AE series. Uh, the Arctic Warfare Super Magnum is a single series. So the Scope rail is actually bonded to the action, which is bonded to the chassis system itself. Now, the skins that you see here actually separate from the, the chassis of the rifle, but it is one complete system. The scope is specifically set up for this specific rifle. I actually so, didn't know that. I didn't know that it was all it was all linked together that way. That is one of the main differences with the Arctic Warfare versus the Police Marksman or the AE. Really? Yes. That, that is all. I learned something today. All right, what are we going to be doing with this rifle? Well, we're going to take it out. We got some charts. Uh, recently made up some charts with some loads that I have. And uh, we're going to take them out and we're going to shoot them and see if everything is uh, where it should be. Awesome. Now, you've got another rifle with you. This one, am I correct? Uh, you're basically, you got the charts, but you're kind of making a, a guess on the muzzle velocity right now. So. With, with these charts, it's going to be a little bit more of a, uh, hey, let's just see how they kind of compare and let's see if I can refine them. Is that right? That, that would be a correct statement. So I've got, I've got historical data on the loads that I've had, and I've, everything has been very uh, consistent because just between the rifle and the reloading process and everything is very consistent. However, conditions always change, and I want to go out and verify that some of the historical data I have is still relevant. If, and if it's not relevant, we have the equipment out there to get new data for to, uh, I should say, to reinvent the charts, or not reinvent, but re, um, to overhaul the charts. Basically, kind of calibrate them yeah. in a way. Cal exactly, calibrate the charts. Okay, now you've got another rifle sitting down here. What are you going to do with this thing? Oh, I don't know. I'm going to go get a workout, so what I'm going to do, apparently. That thing weighs like 50 pounds. Uh, this is my uh, this is a 308 Remington Standard Remington 700 with the Manners uh, T6A stock with the adjustable cheek rest and a uh, knife force scope. Uh, I do have all the data for this one. This one is absolutely correct, 100% on. I know my velocities uh, to a T, so we're going to take that out. I've got the charts currently made up for those. Take them out, shoot them, and uh, see how they how they line up, how accurate they are. All mm -hmm. right. You know, i got to tell you, that looks a lot like uh, one of my rifles. Ugh. Hey, you didn't just take my rifle, did you? No. Oh. I don't think so. Wait I... a minute. That's a different scope. Yeah, actually, good observation. This is a different scope. Okay. All right, guys. This is my uh, this is my play toy, I guess. Uh, the the rifle that I've probably put the most time and energy into into uh, working up or putting together. This is a custom Remington 700 action on a M40 Contour Brux barrel. It's put together, or it's uh, it's gunsmithed by Southwest Precision uh, Rifles LLC in Arizona. A guy named Bob Racine did this for me. And it is heavy. Uh, 
I, I think it's safe to say this thing is heavier than his 338. Uh, but that, that's that's all in the barrel. That's a safe bet, Chuck. Yeah, no, no kidding. I, I hadn't I hadn't picked up his rifle here in a few months, and then uh, I was like, oh, this has got to be heavier than mine. Nope. Um, anyway, so I've got this in a very similar looking and very similarly profiled, I guess is the word, uh, McMillan. And that's where a lot of the, the other, that's where a lot of the extra weight is coming from as well. Although I did take this out of the action not too long ago, or excuse me, I took the action out of the scope, thinking that uh, a lot of that weight was going to be in here. Now, not, not really. This thing is a heavy stock, which helps in recoil, but really this barrel is a beast. Anyway, moving on, what I've got on top of this is a Leopold Mark VI with a first focal plane Tremor II Horus reticle. Yes, I kind of drank the Kool-Aid and went ahead and got a Horus. That's a mouthful. That was a mouthful. Yes. Horus II Tremors. Maybe you should be hunting with that thing. Well, that's... Get rid of the Tremors and the Horuses. Did you ever see that movie, Tremors? Yeah, I saw that movie. Yeah. yeah. I, and I think this would be more than adequate to hunt killer worms. Yeah, well, there you go, man. Especially, yeah. uh, get some explosives, you'd be good to set. Yeah, well, I mean, this muzzle brake makes it seem like I am working with explosives because it is loud. I'm sorry, I can't put a can on mine like yours has to make it even more obscene. Well, you know, when you want to be heard on the moon, you got to fire something big. Absolutely. And, uh, this is definitely going to make a lot of noise when we're out there. Anyway, uh, this is the rifle that I'm going to use with the charts that I already have constructed. Uh, I went ahead and got all my muzzle velocities for this and put together a set of uh, Mecha Streisand's charts and we're going to go out and apply them, see how they work. Now one thing I will say is when the range gets kind of busy, uh, it's a little bit it's kind of bad etiquette to spend five, ten minutes trying to set up a chronograph. So the way I got my muzzle velocities, muzzle velocities is I inferred them from my ballistics program. I used the truing option on ballistic AE, which you also use, right? I do. Yeah. Um, so I basically I took a, a few shots out at a thousand yards, put in what I thought my muzzle velocity was, and then added in what my actual observed drop data was, and it corrected my muzzle velocity. And so far, that's been kind of a consistent method for me. I don't know about you. No, I have a device that uh, keeps me from upsetting everybody on the range and keeps my etiquette high. It's called a magneto speed. I just magneto speed. Strap it to the end of my barrel, hook everything up, and I got me a chronograph. It's about as easy as can be. I was going to say something clever about X Men, but I can't think of anything. Well, I guess you got to use the magnets to check the velocity of the bullets, but you can't really control where they're going, right? Right. You know, this, magnet, magnet this, this, uh, this string of humor appears to be going nowhere. <laughs> anyway, and uh, the other rifle that I'm going to use, uh, and by the way, we're going to do this tomorrow because it's dark and stormy out, is my 308. So I have the data I need for my, uh, my 300 Win Mag, but for my 308, I just have some guesswork. I've got an idea what the muzzle velocity is, but I haven't put my charts together. And this is my whatever a budget rifle is, this is this is it. This is a Remington 700. It's all stock except for the trigger. I swapped out the trigger for a Timney. And then I think I've got a set of, I'm not even sure, I think Leopold bases and some cheap rings. Eh, not cheap rings, but nothing fancy. And then a $299 SWFA Super Sniper in Fix 10. Thank you very much to Borosaurus Rex for the recommendation. I love this scope, and it uh, gets me out past a thousand, no problem. Now, as to whether or not I hit the target, that's a different story. But uh, this is a mill mill turret, so mill turrets, mill reticle, and uh, the optical quality. You know, it's it's not what uh, his Night Force and his Schmidt and Bender certainly are, but it's. It's definitely good enough. I, I've made first round hits on steel at a thousand before. Um, the other day I made a second round hit at 1060, which was a first for me. So if you're looking, and this is kind of a, a tangent, but if you're looking for a good budget scope, then I highly recommend the SW, SWFA Super Sniper. I will say that when I was on a budget, 
that was the scope of my choice was the SWFC. Mm -hmm. Really? Yep. I, actually, did you did you tell me you had one of those before? I don't even remember. I have never owned one. I have looked at them several times. Oh, that, that's what that's what you would have gone with. Or that's Correct. what you wanted. Okay. Correct. So before I was in the position I am in, and not on a budget, but back when I was on a budget, the S, the, sing, the Super Cyber Scope was the scope to go with. All right. So. <laughs> I'm running out of ideas. I just realized I just realized I had this scope kind of sitting in front of my face. So basically we're gonna run out. We're gonna check our data. We're gonna take the magneto speed with us, we're gonna take our rifles with us and our data. Um, I've got the data for my 308, I've got a historical data for my 338, we're gonna run that. We've got the magneto speed, we've got all the equipment there to check and verify everything. Uh, we want to shoot out to several different ranges, out to a thousand, you know, everything from a hundred yards out to a thousand yards. And uh, when we get out there, we actually want to check our drops and true it up with Ballistic AE and see if that data actually matches up with the Magneto speed. That's a good uh, idea. You know, other than that, do uh, you got anything you want to add to that? Yeah, no, I mean, just uh, I'm kind of doing the opposite of what he's doing. Uh, he knows his data for his 308. I have an idea for mine, so I'm going to go get information that I can put into Megastrizian's charts and build some good charts with it. And then for my 300, I've already got everything I need. So really, the question is just going to be: Is the data I have in the charts, in the charts, excuse me, Charters. is the data in the charts going to match what we see out there on the range with our actual observed drop? So I guess we'll see you out on the range. Out of range, man. Ah, hello there, YouTube. How you doing today? What is that? I don't know, man. I think it's a rifle. Let's see how it works out. Okay, what's your handle again? UCS Spirit. UCS Spirit. <laughs> All right, guys, now that we got all the laughing and joking numb nuts out of the way. <laughs> Dude, I'm, I'm still here. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> if I talk like this, is it quieter? Not if you talk loud. <laughs> the problem is that you brought it up. The problem is the transition from like me saying, is that right, to you saying, oh, was it a retard? That was like a split second. I can't even edit that. <laughs> really, that that's... That's a rifle. Like, are you are you hunting dinosaurs with it? What do you do? All right, guys. Now that we got all the the joking out of the, apparently you don't. You need you need, <laughs> you need to start this. Well, you know, I think they have what is it called the megalodon or something like that that hides out in the middle of the woods. No, the, megal the megalodon's a giant shark. Giant sharks. So that makes that makes you a. Dude, yeah, apparently I'm in the wrong century then, aren't I? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Anyway, what is that? Let's try this one more time. <laughs> Screw it. You're up. All right, I'm up. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't calling you laughing, joking, numb nuts. <laughs> Are you sure? Are you just like happy to see me? You know, I, I enjoy my friends, but at the same time, man, I enjoy shooting. So this whole long range thing has got me really worked up. You weren't supposed to bring that up. <laughs> you, said you don't want this on camera. I'm joking. <laughs> you gotta cut that out. <laughs> yeah, but. <laughs> No, I'm uh, hunting the Megalodon thing, I don't know. That swims in the sea. I hold quietness in my head. Like this is a little experiment. Yeah. Does that sound cool? Like, I mean, that's, that's what we're out there for, right? Testing yeah. out there, observations, and yeah. So I'll real start, world data. Yeah, I'll start that over. <laughs> I guess we'll see you out on the range. Out on the range, man.